I'm Olivia. Welcome to Real World Science. People can move their bodies in many different and astonishing ways. How does it work? Well, that's what this program is all about. So get ready to explore your body's skeletal and muscular systems. All of our bones together are called a skeleton. Let's find out more about our skeleton. An adult skeleton has a total of 206 bones. Bones have many purposes and support many functions of the body. Bones provide shape to your body. Without your skeletal system, you'd be as floppy as a water balloon, just a soft blob of skin and stuff. Some bones, like the ones that make up your backbone, give you support. Without those 26 bones, called vertebrae, you couldn't stand upright. Other bones protect your soft and delicate internal organs. Your ribs act as protective armor for your heart and lungs. Your skull acts like a hard helmet to protect your brain. Because your bones are held together by joints, you have the ability to move. Skeletal bones are controlled by your muscles. When muscles pull on bones, they make movement. Without bones, you couldn't walk, talk, or wave. Your bones also provide other incredibly important, but not so obvious functions. Bones produce blood cells, and they also store minerals and other materials your body needs. You've heard the saying, hard as a rock. Well, what makes rocks hard are the minerals that are compressed tightly in the rock. Bones are hard because they're also made up of minerals, primarily two of them, phosphorus and calcium. When most people think of bones, they think of this hard, lifeless, rock-like material that we see in a skeleton. But in reality, the bones that make up your skeleton are living organs. Let's take a closer look at the bones that make up our skeletal system. In addition to minerals, Bone consists of connective tissue. Connective tissue is an elastic body tissue that holds things together. If we were looking closely at a bone, we'd see a tough layer or membrane covering all of the bone except the ends. Blood vessels and nerves leave the bone through this membrane. Beneath the membrane, we see some bone tissue that is hard and dense. It's called compact bone. Small canals carry blood vessels and nerves from the bone's surface to the living cells within the bone. Another form of bone tissue is called spongy bone because it has many small spaces like a sponge. Spongy bone is lightweight and strong and provides support for the rest of the bone. The spaces in bone contain two kinds of soft jelly-like tissue called marrow. Red bone marrow produces the body's blood cells Yellow bone marrow stores fat and serves as an energy reserve. Did you ever notice that you can bend the tip of your ear and move your nose from side to side? The flexible material beneath your skin in these areas is called cartilage. Cartilage is a connective tissue that is more flexible than bone. Most of the bones in your skeleton begin as cartilage, but as you grow, the cartilage is replaced with bone. These are hand x-rays, a one-year-old, a three-year-old, and a teenager. Notice that the replacement of the cartilage by bone is almost complete. Some cartilage, however, never changes to bone. The cartilage in your knee, for example. This acts like a cushion that keeps your femur bone from rubbing against the bones in your lower leg. The place where bones connect or come together is called a joint. There are two kinds of joints in your body, immovable joints and movable joints. Some bones, like the bones of the skull, are connected in a way that allow for little or no movement. They're called immovable or fixed joints. The joints that attach the ribs to the sternum are also immovable. 
Most of the joints in the body are movable and they allow your body to move in a variety of ways. There are different types of joints for different types of movement. Your body has hinge joints. Your elbow is a hinge joint that allows you to bend and straighten your arm. Your knee is also a hinge joint that allows you to bend and straighten your leg. Your shoulders are ball and socket joints. Your hips are ball and socket joints too that allow your hips to move and swing your legs in many different directions. Another kind of joint found in the body is called a gliding joint. Gliding joints allow one bone to slide over another. For example, the gliding joints in your wrist allow you to flex and bend your wrist. Your neck can swivel or pivot because of a pivot joint. A pivot joint allows one bone to rotate around the other. All in all, there are over 200 movable and semi-movable joints in your body. All movable joints are held together with strong elastic bands of connected tissue called ligaments. It's important to keep the bones of your skeleton healthy. How do you do that? Well, first, you should eat a balanced diet. You can strengthen your skeleton by drinking milk and eating other dairy products like low-fat cheese or frozen yogurt. They all contain calcium, which helps bones harden and become strong. And make sure you're active. Playing sports and exercising are great ways to strengthen your bones. As people become older, their bones begin to lose some minerals. This loss of minerals can lead to osteoporosis, a condition in which your bones become weak and can break easily. Exercise and eating foods that contain lots of calcium while you're still growing can help prevent osteoporosis. Bones can also be injured, just like any other part of your body. The most common types of bone injuries are fractures, dislocations, and sprains. A fracture is a break or crack in the bone, like the one shown in this x-ray. A bone becomes dislocated when it comes out of its joint, as seen in this x-ray. A sprain occurs when a ligament is stretched too far. A brace may be needed to help it heal. You can help prevent these injuries by warming up properly before exercising. When you warm up, your joints become more flexible helping to prevent a sprain or dislocation. Wearing the correct protective equipment and playing in safe locations can also help prevent injuries. There are about 600 muscles in your body that provide a variety of different functions. Walking, eating, or just breathing involves the use of these muscles. Some muscle movements are very easy to control, like smiling. It takes, on average, 13 muscles to smile. Frowning takes 43 muscles. Muscles that you can control are called voluntary muscles. When you do any kind of exercise, your muscles are under your control because of voluntary muscles. Then, there are other muscles that are impossible to control completely. For example, your heart is a muscle that pumps your blood, and your lungs are muscles that help you breathe. They're called involuntary muscles. Some of the involuntary muscles are partially under your control. For instance, you can stop breathing, but not for long. As soon as your body notices you're not taking air, it takes control and makes your breathing muscles move. There are three different types of muscles in your body. Let's talk first about skeletal muscles. Under a microscope, a skeletal muscle looks like this. Anytime you move, you're using skeletal muscles. Because you have conscious control over skeletal muscles, they are classified as voluntary muscles. They move when you want them to. 
Skeletal muscles provide the force that moves your bones. Skeletal muscles are attached to the bones of your skeleton by tendons. A tendon is a strong connective tissue found at each end of a skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscles work in pairs to cause motion. For example, as the bicep muscle in your arm gets shorter, it pulls your bones closer together. The bicep is an example of a flexor muscle. A flexor muscle bends part of your body. The tricep muscle in your arm gets longer, and it causes the bones to move away from each other. The tricep is an example of an extensor muscle. Eventually, all skeletal muscles get tired. Smooth muscles are the second kind of muscle we'll talk about. Under a microscope, smooth muscle looks like this. Smooth muscles are involuntary muscles. They are found in your digestive tract and in your blood vessels. Involuntary muscles control many kinds of movements in your body. The third kind of muscle is called cardiac muscle and is found in your heart. This is what a cardiac muscle looks like under a microscope. Cardiac muscle, like smooth muscle, is involuntary. Your heart beats and you don't have to think about it. Unlike skeletal muscles, your cardiac muscle never gets tired. It contracts repeatedly throughout your life. Those contractions are called heartbeats. How do you keep your muscles healthy? Use them. Exercise makes muscle cells grow wider and the entire muscle becomes thicker. A thicker muscle is a stronger muscle. To prevent injuries to your muscles, it is important to stretch and warm up your muscles, making them more flexible and ready for the work they're going to do when you exercise or play. As we've seen, your body can do some pretty incredible things. Your body's bones, working together with your muscles, allow you to perform a wide variety of moves in the real world. Thank you.